Welcome to the Scotsman Rugby Show. Hello, we're at Philip Hall tonight where Selkirk take on Jed Forrest in a good old Borders derby. Both teams aiming to make the quarter-finals of the RBS Scottish Cup. More on that later. We're going to preview the 1872 Cup with Tim Visser, Ryan Grant and Rob Harley providing their views on the big derbies coming up in the pro world. We'll also catch up with Jim Telfer who looks back on his international career in five quick questions. But first we'll start with club rugby and the British and Irish Cup where we catch up with the Gala versus Mosley match at Netherdale. Ball comes in, it's going to be picked up by Stevie Cairns, and Cairns is away down the blind side. Carrying off to George Graham, great pass, and George Graham is going to go in for the try. Great bit of invention there from Stevie Cairns. He just drew his man in, and just at the right moment, popped it to George Graham, and the Gala scrum half at pace goes in for the try, and Gala extend their lead. It's Gala 8, it's Mosley nil. 20 minutes gone in the first Staff. Inside that Gala half, and Oli Thomas makes a break. Oh, he's half tackled, tap tackled. That was lucky for Gala. That's a steal by George Graham. And here come Gala. If you look up here, Stevie Cairns has ball in hand, trying to work his way now back up to the halfway line. As George Graham feeds it out wide, taken on by McQuillan. McQuillan then out to Lee Miller. Miller finds a gap, and Miller's through and two through. He's gone. And Lee Miller, what a run from him up to the 22. Offloads into Kenny, and Craig Kenny's going to go in for the try. No, he feeds it inside to George Graham, and George Graham goes in for Gala's second try. Great, great rugby from Gala. Gala 16, Mosley 6, but what a break from Lee Miller. What support from Craig Keddy. What a finish from George Graham. Lee Miller, he adds the extras. That now makes it Gala 18, Mosley 6, and we've only played eight minutes in this second half. Mosley are attacking this right-hand corner and they're just about there, they're just trying to get themselves over that line, oh they've broken through and I think they could be in for the try they have, they've just burrowed their way underneath and uh, they just kind of just ran out of players and numbers there and they've got the try and they're back in this match here at Netherdale, it's Gala 18, it's Mosley 11, they play just inside the Gala half but it's Mosley on the attack on the halfway line now, have to keep it alive to oh, surely that was a forward pass, surely yeah. He's going to be pinged for that. The referee now having a look at his watch. Surely that's it. It is. And it's all over here at Netherdale. And it's another historic win for George Graham's boys. They defeat Mosley by 18 points to 11. Two tries from George Graham. And the rest of the points coming from the boot of Lee Miller. Fantastic. I mean, it just what the doctor ordered, to be fair. We were very, very disappointed against Ayr last week. And we knew this was going to be a tough ask. And I, and I set them a challenge in, in, in the changing room before the game. And I said, for this, does to beat this team and even compete them, we'll have to play one of our best games. And without a shadow of a doubt, I think we've done it today. We came into the game in, in bits, um, coughed up the ball too much, really. And you don't give Gala, you can't get, afford to give the Gala side too much possession because uh, they've got some great runners in their back line and they've got, some good back, they've got a good back row they can work with. Brilliant, honestly, the, the boys stuck in and it was, um, I think we deserved it in the end. We just put our hearts into it and I think we, uh, we, we pulled off a great win for Gala. It's absolutely brilliant. And of course, of course you, you scored two tries yourself and that second try was an absolute cracker. Uh, it was, uh, I just finished it off really. Lee made a good break, CK got there. Um, Craig and then I, I was just there to pick up the slim pickings and then go into the post pretty easy but I'll take it every day of the week two huge games two teams in the British High League have came here and we've put both of them away it's a pity we never uh, we had such a bad start against Lanetley it could have been three from three who knows we'll have more club rugby later in the programme but let's turn the spotlight now to the professional game the 1872 Cup Glasgow and Edinburgh meet December 21st at Scotston in the first leg of the 1872 Cup and then meet again in Edinburgh at Murrayfield on December 29th. We caught up with the players for their views on the derby that nobody has to get up for. Ryan Grant, Rob Harley from the Glasgow camp and Tim Visser from the Edinburgh camp tell us what they're looking forward to. First, Ryan Grant. I don't need any help getting up for, for an Edinburgh game. You know, I've, I've got scores to settle there as it were. Um, you know, I, I know I know a few of the Edinburgh boys a lot less now, now. Now the years have gone by, but you know, I still I still remember my time at Edinburgh, and I still have 
still keep in contact with a few of the boys there, so it's um, it's good for me to get out against the pitch and try and smash them. Oh, it's it's a huge rivalry. If you look at you know the real intercity derby that uh, that goes on between Edinburgh and Glasgow, it, it's one of the fiercest around. I think uh, you know there's some real uh, there's some real big battles that, that have been played out over the past, and I'm sure this one uh, will be equal to them. The derby, Edinburgh versus Glasgow, and you're you're fighting for your city and. As well as that, you have all, all the guys that you play with when you go to Scotland duty and kind of the guys you know well and played at club level or through the age grade system. So it's just, I think it just ramps up, ramps up the pressure, ramps up the intensity. And I think in, in the past few years when I've been watching these games as a fan and then uh, playing, I think it really shows just how, how much of a battle it is. All three players have made their debuts for Scotland this season as well, so we asked them about their experiences in 2012. You know, it's the highlight of my career so far. Um, you know, join, joining Glasgow and, uh, and, and working towards that has, 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 has been great for me. And it's also been a special time. You know, I love, I love playing for this club and I love these boys, but, you know, getting capped has got to be, it's got to be the, the highlight of my career. And, and also my, my debut at Murrayfield, although we, we lost, it was against New Zealand and it was to a sellout crowd. It was a pretty special feeling. It's brilliant. It was, uh, there was a lot of pressure behind it, of course, from not just from the media, but from uh, from the Scottish people and, and the players around me. Uh, I think everyone wanted me to score, and everyone sort of expected it. And uh, it was all really down to uh, to the players around me. We had a great game out there. Nick De Luca was instrumental, putting me away for two tries, and uh, it was just good to get over the, over the try line and sort of you know shrug, shrug that off me. F fantastic to go away in the summer tour uh, to Australia, Fiji, and Samoa. And kind of have the atmosphere of a, a winning tour and kind of the excitement that was generated by that and then especially for me making my debut against Samoa and, and scoring a try and just incredible experience. Pretty much the, the ideal circumstances were uh, to, to score the winning try on my debut so I think it's all downhill from here. <laughs> popular part of our programme is the five quick questions with internationalists. And this week, it's former Scotland player and coach Jim Telfer, who tells us what he remembers from his international career. Well, it was uh, in early January 1964. It was against France. It was a poor and wet day. That's about all I can remember. It, we won ten 0 but it wasn't a, a tremendous game for, uh, you know, for a variety of reasons. And the fact that we, you know, I was a new cap, and a lot of new caps in the team made it a, a quite a memorable victory. My boyhood hero was a chap called Charlie Drummond, who played for Melrose and for Scotland in the late forties and early fifties. And he played for wing for for uh, for Scotland. I think he played only eleven times, but he had a tremendous reputation uh, as a great runner and a great scorer of tries. So he was my hero. My favourite uh, game as a coach for Scotland was when we played France in 1999, and we scored over 30 points in the first half, and. Uh, I, there was nothing I could say to the team at half time because they'd played so well and although France came back to us we scored five tries that day and it's the best display I've ever seen a Scotland team under my uh, you know, control My toughest opponent wasn't actually directly in my position but it was Colin Meads who played for the All Blacks in the late 50s through the 60s and early 70s and uh, he's been called the greatest player in New Zealand 
I would maybe question that with McCaw now, but he was he was a he was a second row player, but with a back row mentality, and he was head and shoulders among uh, amongst forwards in those days. My favourite player was Gary Armstrong, simply because Gary would play exactly the same way it was Jed Thistle off of the lines. He was as brave as you come, uh, nothing fazed him, and every time he went out to play, he gave his all. Now with a full round-up of the rest of the British and Irish Cup as it affects Scottish teams and more club rugby, here's Stuart Cameron. In Pool 3 of the BNI Cup, Dundee turned a narrow defeat at Carmarthen into a home win a week later. Here's two of the tries from that game from Dundee's Brandon Larson and this from James Fleming, one of the stars of the Scotland 7 squad, of course. But with the last kick of the match, Duncan Weir kicked a 40 metres penalty to give Dundee the victory, their first ever in the competition. In Pool 6, Melrose lost heavily to Nottingham down in England, but at the Green Yards it was much closer. They led 6-3 at the break, but in the second half, this try from Andy Forsyth and a pushover try from Captain Brent Wilson, thanks to a powerful pack, gave Nottingham the initiative. Sepp Visser got one back for Melrose before replacement James Ulridge dived on the ball for Nottingham's third try. The best score of the game, though, was another from Sepp Visser, the Edinburgh pro. He found some space down the left, out to Fraser Thompson, and he was on hand to take the scoring pass. But a fourth try in injury time gave Nottingham the bonus point. So Stirling are second in their pool with two games to play. Dundee are in fourth in theirs. In Pool 6, Galler are second to Mosley, while Melrose stay fourth in Pool 8. In the RBS Border Cup, Selkirk beat Jed Forrest 26-12 at Philip Hawk. That win made it two out of two in the competition, and this man, Mike McVie, had a good evening, scoring 21 of his club's points. But it was Jed who had the better of the first half hour, with Lewis Young scoring two tries. His first came from a break by David Gobby. He created the overlap, and in ran Young for the score. His second try came from Selkirk possession. Gavin Craig found Scott Hendry and with Fraser Harkness outside him there was a good chance for a Selkirk try. But the ball didn't go to hand and with an 80 metre sprint ahead of him it was a race between Lewis Young and Selkirk's Rory Banks and Gavin Craig to the line. Selkirk got two tries in the second half, a second from Mike McVie and this by Darren Clapperton. He went over for his 11th touchdown of the season to give Selkirk the win and inflict a 10th consecutive loss this season for Jed Forrest. Well, that's it for this show and for 2012. But join us on January 2nd when we'll have 10 top tries from 2012 for you to watch. And we can't go without asking that all-important question that's on the lips of all Scottish rugby fans. Will prop Ryan Grant ever shave that beard off? That's a question that you and my fiancé have asked me many times. Um, I have no idea, you know. <laughs> um, it was supposed to go until Christmas Day. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Clearly you've become quite attached to it. Yeah, I've been, I've been made to promise to shave it off before the wedding, but that's not for another year yet, so... Uh, I don't know. Maybe after the winter. Maybe after Six Nations. We'll see. <laughs>